Welcome back to Machinist Made. Today we're going to be going over the Titan 7M. All of these parts in the Titan series can be found on the website Titans of CNC. Shout out to them for providing great educational content. But today we're going to be focusing on how to machine the 7M the way that I would go about doing it with the tooling and machining that I have available to me. So the first thing we're going to do is jump into manufacture and create us a setup. Now the way this model was drawn, it was drawn Z facing this way. We need to change that. So the first thing that I'm going to do, orientation, ZX, go to the top of the part, stock point, and confirm that I am on the stock point above the part. The next thing that I'm going to do is go and select a machine. The reason why I'm selecting a machine is simply because I know what machine I'm actually going to be using. I'm going to be using a Haas VF2. Download that model. Give this just one second and we'll be ready to proceed. Alright, now that our machine model is imported in, we can now go to our stock. I've said this in many other videos and I wish Fusion would uh, maybe fix this in the future. But under here where it says stock in mode, we want a fixed stock size. And we want this to automatically default to something that's usable. I am going to change my Z height here from 1 inch is fine, but I'm going to change the model position to offset from the top. And I'm going to change this 125 thousandths to 20. Again, I only like to take 20 thousandths off the face of the part. That way I'm holding on to the maximum amount of material. The next thing we're going to do is go into post process. We're going to change this process number for me to 8007. Comments to Titan 7M. And then our format and work coordinate settings. Standard is fine. You can do extended. This will get you into your G154P1s if you're on a Haas machine. But we're going to be doing standard G55. Once we've completed this, we can click OK. And now we now have a machine and a part to both look at. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hide that machine so I can focus on just the actual cam side of it i'll go back and add a vice here at the end of the video so if you want to skip ahead to that you're more than welcome to so the first process that we always do when we're running a new part is we're going to face it the tool that i'm going to use and every tool that i use on this channel comes from the milling section in fusion 360 face mill and they have a nice stock two inch face mill here i wish they would change these presets but it's not my software i just use it I'm going to select that face mail and the great thing about fusion and face mailing is it's pretty automatic and pretty intuitive there's some settings that you can change i have another video on my channel if you want to uh, go back and look at that now the next thing that i'm going to do is a little bit of adaptive clearing i want to knock the material off as quick as possible so i'm going to go up here to 2d adaptive clearing the tool that i'm going to use is a 3 8 end mill that's going to work for everything that i needed to do so again, Fusion 360 library, milling tools, flat end mill, 3H right here. Now we'll change my preset down here to, um, let's do aluminum roughing. That's going to run my spindle at 10,186 RPMs at 126 inches a minute. If your machine is not capable of that kind of RPMs, you might want to look down here in the brass section and look at brass roughing. If you can run 5,000 RPM at 50 inches a minute, this kind of what this tool preset is that if you don't see your preset in here you can always change it back over into your tool tab and kind of fit to whatever tool that you're using but for what I'm going to be doing in my machine I'm going to use aluminum roughing I'm going to match select I'm going to go to my geometry tab and there's two pieces of geometry I'm going to select the first one is this one right here that's the floor that's to clear all of this material out and the second one is the bottom of this contour the bottom of this contour will be machined on this side and the only thing I have to do on the other side is put the chamfer on it. So now that I've got those two selected there are some settings that I need to change. So to start with I'm going to go to passes and I am going to change my optimum load to 75 thousandths. I'm also going to change my tolerance to 5 thousandths. I am going to change my stock to leave to only 10 my machine is pretty good still so I don't have to worry about any of that I will turn smoothing on of a tolerance of one thousandths the reason why I do this is so 
A lot of machines aren't equipped with high-speed machining or what they call high-speed look-ahead. So this will actually smooth the transition from line to line in the Haas code itself with G154, I believe. I'm also going to use feed optimization. And I'm going to do a reduced feed rate of 250 inches a minute. Sorry, not 250, 150. 100? A reduced feed rate of 100 inches per minute. That works out on my machine very, very well. Once I've done that, the only thing I need to do is simply click OK. Now, Fusion will go through its process. It will clear everything out, making sure that our part is now ready for its next process, which brings us to these holes right here. So these holes do go all the way through. This is a quarter inch hole, I believe. It is, the diameter is a quarter inch, and the top, I believe, is, top hole is three eighths. So I will drill these holes with a quarter inch drill, and then I will come back with a quarter inch end mill to open them up to their final size. And then I will do the process of contouring and finishing the part. So the next thing I am going to do is that drilling command. So I'm gonna to go to drilling. The tool that I'm gonna use, like I said, is gonna be a quarter inch instead of Going under Fusion 360 Library and Milling, we're going to go to Hole Making Inch. We're going to go to Drills, and then I can go down here to my di diameter equal to 250 thousandths. And there we are. Quarter 20 and a letter E are the same size drill. Mash Select, and then I'm going to run over here, and I'm going to select these four cylinders. I'm just clicking on the wall of the cylinder, not the circle, but the wall. I will, however, go into my Heights tab and change the height. See that blue cylinder right there? That is where is she is going to start feeding. That's where it's expecting material. I need to change that. So my feed height, instead of top height, I'm going to do model top. This allows this green line here to go above the part. I'll change that back so you can see. We were on top height. See that feed line? That's a, going to be a crash. Change that back to model top and everything is clear. I'm gonna simply just click OK. There's nothing that I need to go here. We're going one inch deep in aluminum. Now the next thing that I wanna do is go into pocket right here. I'm gonna change this tool out for a quarter inch in mill. So back to the Fusion 360 library. Milling tools. Flat end mill, quarter inch end mill. I will change this to brass slotting. The reason is my end mill is a going to be a four flute end mill, and I want to make sure that my feed per tooth is lower, and I want to make sure that I'm not trying to destroy the end mill. I'm going to mash select, and then I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to select the bottom ring. With pocket, it's looking for a contour, not a cylinder or not a shape, it just wants a profile outline. The next thing I'm gonna do is go into linking. I wanna make sure helix is turned on, and then I wanna go into passes and change this to zero. I'm gonna, one and done, it's gonna drop in, it's gonna helix in, and then it's gonna open up the hole. Once I've done that, I simply just click OK, and there is my finished process for those counter bores. Next two processes that I need to do, one is a outside contour, and then the next is the chamfer that's actually on the part. So I'm gonna jump into contour. We can get this part finished. The tool that we're gonna use is that 3 8 end mill, so back to tool two. This tool is stored under your documents now, so you don't have to go back through the process of finding that tool. I'm gonna to choose brass finishing because I like the feed and speed that this provides. I'm gonna simply select OK, go to my geometry, select my contour that I want to finish, go over to passes, turn on roughing passes, change my roughing step over to 150 thousandths. I want three of those passes and I'll go back into geometry, turn my stock contour on and select this bottom profile for my end mill to stay contained within. Once I've done that, I simply select OK. Now this area that I was talking here of concern is now cleaned up. 
I can now move on to doing the contour down here of the total size of the part by going back into 2 T by going back into 2D contour. I can go back into my geometry, select my bottom profile, and simply just click OK. Nothing to constrain there. Now the only thing I have left to do is the chamfers. Again, I'm going to go into contour. The tool that I'm going to use is a hole making tool. It's going to be under engraving and chamfer mills. Sorry, it's going to be under milling tools. And then we're going to use this half by 45. Select OK. Now this is going to be a two step process. There's going to be two different operations. One for the sh small chamfer and one for the big chamfer. So I'm going to select my shallow chamfer first. I'm going to go into passes. It automatically knows that I want a chamfer. I'm going to do a tip offset of 50 thousandths and click OK. Now the next thing that I want to do is do the big chamfer going all the way around the part. Again, I'm going to go into 2D contour, go into my geometry, and select the bottom of that chamfer. Then I want to go into my passes tab, and my chamfer offset for this one is going to be 125 thousandths, I believe. So I want to simply go to a part file that I have. You click, hold, and drag the file that you would like to import into. I'm going to adjust this down. I'm going to get this situated roughly where I want it. All right. So that's probably very close for what we're doing. Again, this is a simulation, not a crash detection. Once we get that set up, we can now go back into manufacture, go back and edit our setup and position our vice part and all into our machine in its perspective position. Again, keep in mind Fusion does not do crash detection. It only does model simulation. And there is our part inside of our machine. And we can simulate with machine. And we can actually watch the part run inside the actual machine. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would, make sure you like and subscribe. And I uh, hope to see you back here. We've got a lot of different videos and tutorials on Fusion 360 when it comes to not only the Titan projects, but other tutorials that we have done. So like I said, I hope you like and subscribe, and I hope to see you back here.